Hi. This video is not going to be what I usually talk about. It's not going to be a fun one, uh, but it's something that I have debated talking about online, but I feel like it's getting to a point where I should say something. At the bottom line, I started my YouTube channel for myself, and I've always wanted it to be like a memory scrapbook in digital form of my life. Obviously, I do like when people engage with my videos and, you know, subscribe, follow me, whatever. But this YouTube channel, seriously, it was for myself first and foremost. That's the main mission of why I started the channel. But with something like this that isn't a happy part of my life, that isn't something I like showing other people, it's made me feel like I shouldn't talk about it at all. And I think that's a pretty normal thing to feel and I've always had a fear of oversharing and it's not just on here it could be on Instagram it could be just having a conversation with someone I don't want to tell everyone my business to the point where it's obnoxious or I'm genuinely saying too much about myself that it's like a safety concern like I'm not going to share my address and I'm also not going to share personal details about my family's life you know what i mean but this is something that is in my life and i want to make this video because i want to be able to someday look back at this and just look at how far i've come so right off the bat if anxiety or depression bothers you if it triggers you in any way do not watch this video i completely understand because that's why i need to make this video today so let me just start at the beginning when i was eight years old i got very sick it's not like a life-threatening illness, it was, I was sick. I had a fever, I was down on my couch for two weeks, which was pretty devastating being eight years old. It developed into a fear of getting sick. And I was just very paranoid all the time. I still struggle with this sometimes. I get really uneasy when, I mean, we're in the middle of a pandemic and that alone stresses me out, but I get really uneasy if someone around me is sick. I am when I am sick it's horrible it's awful because I always for some reason I always am like I'm never going to get better my brain always tells me you're never ever going to get better this is like a permanent situation I don't know why that's just this is what happens particularly vomiting is something I just can't I can't handle I know how silly it may sound and I probably will say oh I know this sounds silly a lot during this video but it's a very real thing and not getting sick turned into more than just, I'm worried about not getting sick, I'm worried to go out in public, I'm worried that people don't like me. All these fears of mine that started out being pretty surface level started just getting more and more intense. Being eight years old, I didn't know how to classify my feelings, so I just would say I'm nervous. I'm very nervous right now. I'm scared. Sometimes I would be able to pinpoint a specific reason and other times I would just feel the feelings of being nervous and being scared for God knows why. I have no clue. Got to a point when I started fourth grade where I was having panic attacks every single day pretty much um, to the point where I had to get pulled out of school for a month. Not to say that there are kids my age that just didn't have mental health issues at that time. I wasn't seeing it. I didn't know anyone else who was feeling the feelings that I was feeling. So I was horribly embarrassed, but I couldn't help feeling the way that I felt and I needed help. And that eventually led to me being diagnosed with anxiety. And once, once that happened, it was like, okay, things make sense. I'm not alone. Like it's okay to feel the way that I'm feeling and depression as well so I was really not doing well eventually I did go back to school but I still was having panic attacks and I was put on medication I ended up going to therapy as well that whole school year and a little bit into fifth grade I was really struggling with myself and my anxiety even though I had these tools around me and throughout fifth grade through seventh grade I struggled with my anxiety on and off and needing medication and needing people to talk to, suffering with having a lot of panic attacks and then suddenly feeling fine. It really sucked. Um, and then it just led to a point where I was overcoming it, which is good. I was feeling like I didn't need my medication anymore. I stopped going to therapy. I was able to pretty much not have any panic attacks at all unless it was something that 
you know, it was an appropriate response rather than just all of a sudden being like, I am not feeling well, I am going to have a panic attack for no good reason that I can explain to you. My seventh grade year all the way through my freshman year, I had no real issues. Every once in a while, since it is something I'm just going to deal with for my whole life, I would feel really sad and have a bad day and that's okay, but I knew how to cope with it. For me, distraction is a great way to cope with my anxiety. Um, and not like an unhealthy distraction, it's like going out and like going to the store is a good thing for me to do or watching TV or sometimes doing work is a really good distraction for me. Just keeping myself busy um, and not letting my brain have time to really dwell on all the little things and turn it into a massive deal. When I was a sophomore, um, my anxiety came back but in a different way, I would say. The events during my sophomore year of high school were horrible, just awful. My anxiety and depression was triggered by the events around me, not just feeling it, which in a sense is good because I was able to just pinpoint, like, this is the problem. If I stop doing this, this is gonna make me feel better. And I still had things to distract me. I was very involved with school. I had good friends at the time. I was, you know, staying busy and staying active, which is good, even though deep down I wasn't feeling 100%. Now, I actually did make a video talking about um, that year, or kind of, um, on this channel, and it is privated. It is mine now, it's not yours. Do I regret making that video? No, because I said what I needed to say, and I've come to terms with everything that year, it taught me some very valuable lessons, and I was able to move on from it. But does that time in my life still suck? Absolutely. But I don't need to talk about it anymore. I don't feel like talking about it anymore because I'm over it, I've moved on. And then junior year came along. Junior year was great. Um, I had some good friends again. I was playing my dream role in a musical um, and I had good opportunities lined up. And then we all know what happened, the world shut down. And when that was happening, I think I was more in shock of it all, and I couldn't process my emotions properly, and that feeling continued bleeding into my senior year. With my senior year, there was no in-person school, no real chance to go out and do things and really have the year that anyone expected, and I'm kind of mad at myself because when you are a senior, part of the fun of that is like, oh, we're, you're so close to the end, you're gonna graduate, you're gonna move on, it's gonna be so great, and abs absolutely, that's very much true, but I think I was looking at it in all the wrong ways um, because I was deep down frustrated and I didn't, I didn't know how fr just how frustrated I truly was. Being like, oh, I'm so happy, I'm never gonna have to deal with this teacher again, you know, I, I've, I've hated this year and it's brought me nothing, and just being so negative, and sure, are those feelings valid? Yes, but I fail to recognize just how precious that time was and what it was supposed to be. And I know it's really hard to explain if you were not someone who graduated in a pandemic, but um, it sucked and um, I said I didn't need a graduation ceremony. I said I didn't need my last show. I said I didn't need a prom. I didn't need a senior trip. I didn't need any of that and I still don't need any of that. I didn't get any of that. Well, I got the graduation, but whatever. Um, but I will always probably have this feeling of like, oh, I was supposed to do that, but it never happened. So it's like this confusing feeling of like, I miss something that I never even got to miss. Um, and it sucks, but I graduated and I knew this even prior to me graduating, I'd say. I was pretty dead set on this happening when I was in 8th grade, maybe even 7th grade. I took a gap year. I'm on a gap year right now. I mean, I'm, I'm taking a community college course, but I don't really see that as truly counting as like a college experience. Anyway, um, I decided to take a gap year because of many different reasons. Uh, the big ones being I was the youngest in my grade, did not feel like being 17 going into college, that really freaked me out. I'd never had a job before because I was so involved with school that 
I didn't have time to do it. And third of all, I wanted to do the Disney College program. I've definitely built up the reputation for being the Disney lover, if you know me in real life, or if you only know me online. I've made videos on this channel of me at Disney and me talking about how much I love Disney. Even videos that have nothing to do with Disney. I'm sure I've talked about Disney in like a vlog or something. You know what I mean? I love Disney. The college program is something I've always wanted to do. Um, I've wanted to go into character performing. I still do. I still want to do this. Um, and I applied and I was really confident in myself because I had researched pretty much everything about the Disney college program. Again, I know so much about Disney and I was just so ready and I thought that I would get it, but I didn't get in. Um, I have to keep telling myself it's not my fault because I didn't even make it to the interview process. It was literally just like a robot being like, we don't have any roles for you at this time. And this goes back to the pandemic again, where a lot of people that are getting to go back, well, a lot of people that are getting to do the Disney College program now are people that were working at Disney and then the pandemic happened so they got let go or they got their college program canceled so those people are like top priority and I understand that but it was just so devastating to have this whole year planned out to like do something that you wanted to do for so long and then you don't get to do it. It's not just about the college program unfortunately because since I'm not doing the college program it has created a year of being pretty much in my house home alone. I feel very alone and because of that it has brought pretty much everything back. Um, and it sucks. It really sucks. Um, I guess I'm making this video to spread awareness or whatever but um, I mean I am. I think a lot of people don't fully understand what anxiety is or depression is it's not just oh I got a little sad or oh you're just really you get really nervous and stressed about everything it is it, it I'm for me my anxiety manifests physically sometimes if it's really bad I will get I will not be able to sleep I will not be able to eat I get full body shakes and my teeth chatter I can be a million degrees outside and my teeth will still chatter if I'm having a panic attack I will get chest pains chest spasms I won't be able to digest my food properly it's more than oh I'm, I'm nervous so I'm just gonna cry a little bit now it's not like that at all and I think a lot of people just don't understand if you don't have it it's so hard to explain and I wish that people could just understand and I also at the same time I don't wish these feelings on anyone but I wish that they could understand if that makes sense I'm not specifically asking you but I guess what I wish and what I am asking for is for people to just be patient with me try to understand what I'm feeling even if you can't ever imagine feeling that way or you don't understand it I'm kind of sick of people trying to help solve the problem rather than just be supportive. Like if you say, oh, I feel sad and someone comes up to you and says, oh, okay, well, just feel happy then. That's the solution. But you can't, you can't just change this emotion no matter what you do. How it should be is, oh, I'm sad. Oh, okay. Do you want to talk about why you're sad? I'm here to listen and I'm here to support you in any way that I need. That's how I wish it could be rather than just saying, oh, you don't need to feel this way. Here's Here's the automatic solution, here's this, when I guess I'm just asking for someone to listen. Now you might be thinking, oh, if you are really anxious again and really sad and depressed again, why don't you find the solution, right? But I have. My next step is to go to college, but I want to go to college. With, with everything that has gone on for the past two years, I just want something normal. I want to go to college in the fall, not, you know, end the school year until the summertime like it's always been my whole life instead of oh we're gonna have these online classes I don't want to start school because if I really wanted to you know I could really really work hard and apply to get into a school for like next semester or something but I just I just want a normal college experience and I want to be around people that you know have stuff in common with me I'm so excited to start the next stage of my life because being 18 but also 
not being in a situation to really use my adult freedom. Like, I'm not looking to move out right now because I have things in store. I'm not looking to, I don't know, ad adopt an aunt. Like, I don't, I don't know. You get what I'm saying? I, I have all these adult privileges, but I don't feel like using them right now because it's not the right time. I hate where I am right now, but I wanted to make this video because it's going to get better. And I know <laughs> that is a hard thing for myself to fully believe, but I have to keep telling myself it's going to get better. I'm going to enter the next stage of life in a year and it's going to be awesome and I just need to be as strong as I can to get there. For I'd say a good solid month, I thought that each day I was just getting worse and worse and I felt truly like, oh, this day is so much worse than the last. I'm only getting worse. There's no part of me that's getting better and it should. But the moment I started talking about it with other people, I started to feel a little bit better and I'm still really not you know 100% that's okay but I wanted to talk here for myself and I wanted to let everyone who watches my videos know um, whether you know me in real life and you watch them if you're watching this and you don't know me I feel like I would be lying to you by just saying oh I'm fine and you know putting on like this happy face and just just showing you the good parts of my life right now. Will I delete this video? Maybe. I don't know. But um, I needed to post it. I need, I just needed to post it. I need to say something because keeping it in is not good. That's what's going on in my life. That's what it's like for me personally to be dealing with both anxiety and depression since Di being diagnosed since I was nine, but really feeling it since I was eight years old. So this is always going to be a struggle for me and something I'll always have to work on, but that's okay because as long as I am actively working on it and being honest about how I'm feeling, I will get through it and I will come out on top. If you see me in the next video and I'm really, really happy, cool, that's great. I have some really awesome days too, but I also have really bad days and it's finding this mixture of making sure I'm okay throughout both, even even if I feel bad. So I just wanted to let you know what's going on. That's it. Um, thank you for watching. Please take care of yourself. Always know someone loves you. Um, and that can be a hard thing to believe sometimes, but please take care of yourself. Um, and I will see you all next time. Thank you.